everyone. It's Chelsea from Paper Rock to Your Studio. Uh, there was a camera situation, so I'm just showing you what I did to this before I actually remembered to turn on the camera. I put some blue and white mixed paint on this canvas panel with uh, a flat rectangular palette knife, kind of scraping it down. I scratched some uh, lines in with a uh, skewer and then I just threw on a little bit of collage. And that's how this piece started. Uh, the idea of it is to make textured florals with heavy body paint. So uh, a couple videos ago, you saw me make some ATCs where I made textured florals with mediums like heavy, super heavy gesso, uh, 3D matte gel, and I think a, a light molding paste, I think. Um, and then I, then I colored them afterwards. This time I'm using Liquitex heavy body acrylic paint plus collage and, uh, you know, scratching and things, scratching and, and mark making. But I'm using the palette knives in the same way that I did on that other video. So I'm mixing colors on my paper palette and then I'm using a, uh, a couple different palette knives to press and scrape the paint. It's not quite as thick and heavy. Uh, the, one that, the one that I enjoyed the most was the the super heavy body gesso that's from Liquitex, um, and this paint isn't as as thick and in uh, textural as that, but it does have the same effect. When I press down, I can make a petal shape or a leaf shape. I started out with the leaves. I'm not sure why, because I probably should have started out with the flowers, placed all those, and then added in the leaves. Because what I really needed to do at this point was to let this dry because now I have all this green paint on there right and it's not dry it's not going to be dry anytime soon and then I go in and I start adding other colors and of course you mix green and red what do you get brown <laughs> it's a neutral <laughs> but still maybe you don't want brown flowers so um, I was doing part of this on the live stream last week and when you're doing a live stream you just have to do it you just have to keep going you can't um, rethink what you did so I just kept going but I'm I've got some basic colors of paint it came in a set and I'll try to put some links below the video uh, for what paint I used and what um, and then I'll put a link for that super heavy gesso because I think really that's that stuff's the bomb I didn't use it on this one but <laughs> I don't know that I remember to put a link in the other video I can't remember anyway but it's busy and it's only going to get busier in June. Uh, ATC a day in June. And also I have uh, one of my sons coming to visit for a couple weeks, which means he'll sleep in my studio, which means I don't have access to my studio. So I have to get a lot done before he shows up. Uh, probably my favorite flower on here is the yellow one where I use the smaller pointed palette knife. And I'll put a link to the palette knife set that I have. There's actually lots and lots more. And I saw a different palette knife set that had even, that had pointier, uh, like ones that came really to a pretty sharp point. Not, not stabby sharp, but sharp enough that I could maybe make some other kind of smaller flowers that I couldn't achieve with this one. But this is a canvas panel. And I think, I did not measure it, but I think it's probably six by eight. So it's not very big and it would be nice to maybe have some knives that make even smaller, have a smaller press down point, um, even more pointy than this one. But I tend to use this one the most on this. And then I also use this curved one that has more of a wide curve and it makes a different type of petal or leaf shape. But I'm having fun mixing colors, making different colors out of my basic set. I have more than red, red, uh, yellow, and blue, but I, they're not, I don't have every color. So um, there's kind of an orangey red, and then there's a magenta. There's a couple different blues, a couple different greens, some yellow, white, black. So I'm just messing around mixing. 
mixing different colors together with the knife and then doing this press lift technique to make leaves and flowers. So if you haven't watched the one where I did it with the ATCs and the, and the, the uncolored mediums, you might want to go back and watch that. I'll link it in the I card up above. If you hover on the right hand side, there'll be um, a link to that video. And after you watch this one, you could go watch that one to see um, more of the technique of making the textured flowers. And I'm no pro at this, guys. Um, this is something that's new. There are classes out there. Uh, I don't know if she teach classes, but a person who does this a lot and makes some really amazing uh, big, bigger paintings is uh, named Wendy Brightbill. I'm sure she probably has classes on how to do this better. But, you know, my content's free. <laughs> Hers isn't. <laughs> so uh, you might start on the basics with my stuff and then maybe if you really get into making textural paintings like this you might want to uh, see if she has a class. In fact I'll go look for you and I'll, I'll uh, see if she does and not, if she does I'll put a link below. I don't actually know if she does. I think that she's probably taught in some of the like year-long classes that are out there where you get a lesson every week. It wouldn't surprise me if she's taught in some of those, but I don't know if she has her has like an individual website with her own classes or not. So I just continue to mix more colors, add more flowers in. Um, what I'm not getting here, because I didn't mix any really, is any darks. I do have some black paint out to make some shades but I never really did it at this point and I'm just still use, doing lighter colors so I do end up coming back later after all of this is dry so that's why this video is kind of weird <laughs> you get some of it that was filmed with my camera on my phone and some of it that was filmed with the camera from my um, computer and it would kind of go back and forth because I had to patch things together as I was having drying time, plus I was on the live stream, plus I forgot to turn on the camera at the beginning of when I started making this during the live stream. This is a secondary camera. So, yeah, I'm trying to dry it with the heat tool. Uh, not getting very far, really, with the heat tool. Because the paint, of course, is thick. Because it's, it, I'm trying to make texture with it. So, in some areas, the paint is very thick. It's not going to dry quickly. It really just needs to be left alone and let dry, you know, for a while rather than trying to speed through it because it just isn't going to work. So I set it aside. I made those three ATCs and then I was messing around with this um, Marabou acrylic spray paint, which the sprays, the sprayers don't work anymore, but I was using it, uh, the the plastic straw inside dip in and kind of use it to draw with and I added some leafy sprig type things in this darker mint color so, and I think I added a uh, maybe a little bit of I don't know if I did yellow or orange or something somewhere still during the live stream I was messing with those paints inside those bottles that spray do no, do not spray but I still have paint inside there, so how do you use it? And that's one way is to use the little plastic straws inside as a mark making tool. So then I just wanted to, the, the background was um, intentionally streaky. I was intentionally making it that way and I decided I really didn't like it that much. So I, I started to paint some of it out to make it a little bit less distracting. That was what I did with that rectangular palette knife. I was scraping down, trying to make kind of like, almost like blue and white striped wallpaper or something, but I ended up not liking it that much. So then this is the next day. So I've come back, it's completely dry at this point because it's dried overnight. And I decided to add some more collage because I like it. And I think it's fun to do collage with other techniques. So I wanted kind of a, an indication that, the, that this um, vase 
is rounded. So I want to type some type of a, a mark on one side to make it look more rounded. So I put a piece of paper on there. Um, I'm just putting other little torn pieces here and there and adding in more visual texture and color with the paper. And I'm not cutting anything, I'm just tearing it so it's real organic looking, just like the, the flowers and leaves are. You, they are very painterly because you can't control the palette knives very well. So you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit, right? <laughs> so this isn't as illustrated as a lot of my work is because you can't this is one way to get a little bit more loose painting with palette knives because you really you can't not control you can't make a fine line easily if at all so I am adding in more 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 I want a lot of variation in color I need to add in some darker areas and I did that with some different little papers um, tissue paper that had black printing on it. I like print and numbers and things like that as part of my collage process. It, I like the way they look. I'm using Liquitex Matte Gel Medium to do this. Um, and then because there's so much texture, I'm using a wet paper towel, not sopping wet, but damp enough that it doesn't stick and pressing after I've, I've got the glue on there and I've pressed it down with the tips of my collage brush, I'm also pressing down with this damp paper towel to keep, to get the paper to get down into the grooves. There's a lot of texture going on here. Intentionally, right? <laughs> so tearing little, mostly just little oval shapes or round shapes and gluing them on. A lot of fun. I like to glue stuff. So this is really a true mixed media piece because it's got the acrylic and it's got all different types of papers that have got different types of, um, I mean, some of them are tissue, some of them are rice paper, some of them are regular text paper. The, uh, the one that's, that vase is a th pretty thick scrapbook paper. And I guess I did cut that. That's the only thing that I cut out with scissors. Everything else was torn. So yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this. I hope you try it. It's fun. Get yourself a set of palette knives and uh, try some of your heavier mediums that you have and see if you can make some textured stuff because it turns out pretty cool. Now this brush here, this used to be a pretty nice brush and then it got uh, gunk in it and I could not get it out. At the very tip, there was like these blobs. And so I did something you really shouldn't do. I cut, cut it off. <laughs> so it's very flat and um, flat across the top and short. And it, it turned it into like a kind of like a scrubby brush. And because of all this texture, um, with the canvas panel plus all the paint being on there, I thought this would be a good one to add just a little bit of more paint um, because I could pre I can press it down on the tips, um, I can mash it uh, in kind of almost like a stencil way, like a stencil brush way because of it's a damaged brush and I don't care about it and it's short and stiff because I cut most of the bristles off. So I would not, I would not say go cut bristles off your brush, but if you have one that's wrecked, but the bottom part of it is still nice, but the top is all uh, got dried something on it and you can't get it off, or you're not willing to take, to make the effort to get it off. You could, because you could soak it in Murphy's oil soap, you know, and all that, but I just, I just cut it off. <laughs> snip, snip, snip. That's what I did. <laughs> so sue me. So I'm mixing colors. I'm adding in some lighter tones into the flowers where they were made with, you know, one color of palette knife work. If I thought it needed a little highlight or something, I put some of that in there. Just adding more visual texture and highlights and shadows, basically. 
to make them maybe look a little bit more dimensional visually texturally they are dimensional but visually maybe they're not so that's what I'm doing here with this weird little brush <laughs> I kind of like it though I think it's it's kind of easy to use on such a rough type of a surface like this next month in art joy sharing we're talking about surfaces so maybe I have to talk about uh, what you use on a rough surface how how do you deal with something that's super bumpy and scratchy and rough I'm sure I'll be talking about that next month in June maybe it's already June no it's not June yet got a couple more days I don't know when I'm posting this video I'm just looking figuring out when I'm posting the video not the same day that I made it which is the 27th I think I am posting it on the 30th so not June quite yet but it will get there so then you know me I like illustrative style I'm in tab and lines so I did use a green stabilo and a Payne's gray um, ink tense pencil to just add in a little bit of detail I didn't go around everything and draw a line around everything like you would with an illustration but I did add in some of this darker color and kind of refine a few of the shapes that were um, out of control a little bit and added a little bit more dark right because remember I was saying I didn't have a lot of contrast because I wasn't putting darks in there I was constantly trying to get bright colors and so I didn't think too much about my contrast and you definitely want contrast so here I am with the Payne's Gray getting some of that in there and then I did um, blend out some of this pencil so that it didn't stay a pencil line it uh, became more like a watery uh, shadowed shadowed effect by using a water brush so I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you give it a try. If you're in the Art Joy Sharing Art Community over on Facebook, you can uh, post it there. Um, use the hashtag AJOS Mediums, which is Art Joy of Sharing Mediums. That's our hashtag for this month. Uh, using different mediums in different ways all month long. So we'd lo I'd love to see what you did with this technique. And um, hopefully I'll do it some more. Who knows? I get distracted and I do stuff and then I do other stuff and uh, who knows. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below if you have a question about this. Um, I do have links below for some of the products that I used so that you will you know, know if you have those or not. Also, you can subscribe to my channel for free content. I usually make a video every other or every third day. So that's a lot of free content. Also, you can join my channel membership for $1.99 a month and get exclusive content that only members can see. And that's like less than a coffee. So it's not that much. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>